In part 1, we learned some basics about electricity, generation, and amber. But how did we get from there to here? Well, according to the popular story, it had to command with a kite. Okay, there was also a key. The man was Benjamin Franklin. The year, 1752. The kite, as far as we know, was never named. And the key, that unlocked the mystery of the electricity. You see, Ben Franklin's highly dangerous experiment proved his theory that lightning and the spark from amber were actually the same thing. Over the years, not only did we find out that electricity could be generated, but also that it could be conducted. But how to make practical use of it? Any takers? Actually, two great men did, although from different approaches. One was Thomas Alva Edison and the other, perhaps lesser known, Nikolai Tesla. By 1879, he had improved the original design, making light bulbs that would last 40 hours then, 1,200 hours. Now that he had a product, he needed a way to power homes that would use his light bulb. Ever the inventor businessman, he developed ah. the direct current system, charging large batteries that would then power the big cities. He invested big, and he was raking in big profits as his company had essentially sole control of the system. Unfortunately, the system also had big flaws. For example, it worked in the cities, but it was impractical over long distances, and Edison knew it. So he hired another brilliant man. Nikolai Tesla to help solve the problem. Tesla, over his career, had developed the fluorescent bulb, neon lights, radio, radar, the electron microscope, and even the microwave oven, years before they were officially invented. He was actually able to save Edison a lot of money with refinements to the system. He was, however, a timid man, directly opposite to Edison's domineering personality contrasting to were their approaches to genius. For while Edison was the consummate experimenter, famous for his trial and error approach, Tesla was more of a theoretician. Unfortunately, due to the extreme differences in their outlook and approach to everything, they eventually had a falling out. Tesla quit. After parting ways with Edison, Tesla also invented a cheaper, more efficient system to generate and transmit electrical power the alternating current system, actually solving direct current problems and a system far superior to Edison's. When Tesla got financial backing from the industrialist George Westinghouse mm. and started mm. offering AC systems to developing cities, Edison set to work discrediting ah. Tesla and his work. Edison used his vast resources and influence to squash Tesla's genius in what history books call the current wars a public relations battle royale that rivals modern dirty politics and smear campaigns. Between two competing currents, two schools of thought, a historic choice was made. Alternating current eventually won, and it's the standard that's most widely used today. Direct current still survives today in the form of batteries and solar cells, but never in the scale it used to enjoy before. A curious footnote to this entire affair is that while AC won over DC, it was Edison who eventually profited from it. For it was Edison's company who was commissioned to build most of the AC generators at that time. Perhaps a primary reason why Tesla is relatively unknown today. And so here we are, with energy that will keep driving us forward as long as we can generate it. Today, just as there are alternative sources to generating electricity, there are alternatives to managing it and keeping it sustainable with lesser impact on the environment. It's all up to us, because we already have.